Hello, Amy. Hello. <laughs> Are you a South Australian? Yeah. Cool, cool. Welcome to Australia. Thank you, Thanks. Hi, yo. So, um, Craig and Kathy have marked these lambs. So, marking for the ring there. No real ring, no balls on this little guy. Um, that was yesterday, and then lost a couple overnight. Um, got a couple rule outs. They came off pretty tight paddock. Um, potentially got a bit of worm burden, so we're gonna do some fecal light cast, but we're gonna do a post-mortem, just pull them apart, try to get some answers. Um, obviously they don't need these anymore, so this is where they used to live, but now they're chasing grass in the sky, as lambs do. Um, so yeah, walking through, we've already post-mortemed one. We, we found sand in the, in the rumen of that particular animal. Um, and um, we've taken a range of samples here that are gonna go to the ag department. We'll start a whole new setup for the next Oh, you're amazing. Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Amy's uh, filing her vet student. <laughs> She's the future of veterinary medicine. I'm the past. <laughs> um, and um, that was pretty much the only pathology we saw was um, sand and stuff in the abomasum. This is the abomasum contents here. Got a little bit of milk in there, a bit of grass. And this is the contents out of the uh, out of the room of that animal. And then we found uh, there's some serious atrophy of the fat around the heart, which suggests that she'd been in a negative plane of energy for a while. The other thing we noticed about these little guys is they're scouring. So if we have a look here. Um, yeah, so obviously we, we worry about worms. Um, we're doing fecal egg counts on, on all three of these. And um, so generally in lambs, maybe not such an issue, but um, it's been an odd season, hasn't it? It's been really wet and cool and yeah. things like that. So we'll open this guy. Whenever I do a post-mortem on a ruminant, um, I always go right side up. Mm -hmm. Good reason to go right side up is? Your intestinal contents might like well, in there, yeah, the, yeah. Well, you can see everything because the rumen's on the left. Yeah. And so, if you're doing like a beast, um, like a like a big steer, or whatever, the rumen's in the way. So, if you do them with the left side up, all the cool stuff is see hidden. Everything. The abomasum, the omasum, all those loops about, and the, the kidneys are kind of pushed to one side. So, it's, you'll find the spleen really easy because it's on the left. Yeah. But everything else is kind of hard to see. And the spleen's a low, pretty low interest to us. So I will grab the spleen from that last one. I'm um, just to chuck in our post mortem. When I'm doing a big steer and I'm on my own, we might as well do them the same way. I cut from the brisket forward, just under the skin. Mm -hmm. If you cut from the outside of the skin, you tend to dull your knife. Yeah. On these little guys, not such a big deal. Oop. Hang on to that leg for me, Yeah. And then, um, then just cut along the skin there. Stuff names. Cut down into the leg there, and then I just cut it into the bladder, and then just cut down to the coxal thermal joint. Yep. Yeah. And that'll just make that leg lay back for us. Mm -hmm. and then I just take all the, the skin, and because he's just a little little lamb, I'm going to try to take the body wall with me. On a on a cattle beast, and I'm going to skin him back first. Mm -hmm. So just, just putting a bit of tension on that and pulling it back, so you can see what's going on in there. And then just under the under the leg, that brachial plexus, you know, underneath the shoulder blade. Yeah. That opens up real nice. The interesting thing that's just for a point, if you're at a feedlot or whatever, and some animals have died in the pen, when they die, they bloat up. And then, as a, as a veterinarian, you might get asked, did this animal die of bloat? If they die of bloat, they'll be they'll be very red and from here forward, and very yeah. pale from here back. And that's because as they bloat, the rumen pushes up onto the vena cava. Yeah. And they can't get any blood to the back end of the animal. Do they also have a bloat line? Yep. There? Correct. Good call. Cool. So right here where the esophagus comes into the thoracic inlet. So very good. Yeah, so it'll be congested um, here. Yeah. And it'll be pale in there. Because what's happening is the rumen's pushing on the diaphragm. And so it's really hard for blood to get back into the, th into the, th into the thorax. Mm -hmm. So when you take the esophagus out, good call, very good. There'll be a bloat line right there on yep. the esophagus. So we can start there, actually. So on a feedlot animal, especially, I'll often look in here. Not such an issue on a lamb. If I just cut up into the throat latch, cut those uh, the, the hyoid apparatus, you know, mm -hmm. those little bones that suspend the um, the trachea. Yeah. And then just peel back like that. And then you got your hand there. You got your there's the epiglottis. Mm -hmm. There's the arytenoids, and the esophagus is laying right on top. So the first place that goes into the esophagus, just put my knife down into the actual esophagus. Open that up and with a black blade of my life. Just kind of clean it off. If it's a if it's a cattle beast, I'm looking for little ulcers and things in here. Sometimes there's some there's some cool worms. You that, can get a worm that goes yeah. in. Yeah, I've seen yeah, that it's pretty rad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's kind of one of those 
things that probably have no significance, but it's really cool. Yeah. Right? And they're all spiraling. Oh, oh, it's, oh, it's some ghost of them. Yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember when I was in, as a vet student, I was like, whoa, check these out. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So then the retinoids, that's where you get um, Fusobacterium necrophorum gets in there and it causes calf diphtheria. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Um, you can also see tracheal edema is another one for what they call honkers in the feedlot, where you get mm -hmm. edema in the trachea. And then also in the trachea, I'm looking for, in cattle beasts, I'm looking for IBR, infectious bovine rhinotracheitis. So I'll open up the esophagus and open it up and just have a look. And that looks good too. Sometimes you'll see little lungworms in these little dudes too. Mm -hmm. And that bloat line that you're talking about, Amy, would be if when we did a pluck, there would be where this esophagus, see it's nice and pale here. This would be mm -hmm. very red if it had died of bloat mm -hmm. or kind of a bluish color. And then it would be a different color in the thoracic again. Look, it's cool. cool. Um, if, it's, if it's a cattle beast, I tend to take my knife and put it underneath the, there and cut so that I'm, so I'm cutting it under the skin. This guy's just a little kid, so I can just kind of pull it back. And then with a, with a cattle beast, I take and cut down between the ribs down to mm -hmm. the costochondral junction. Then I turn my knife sideways and cut along the costochondral junction. And then I break the ribs back individually. But okay. being as he's a little lamb, what we can do is we can just come along here and just cut down along the sternum. Try not to poke Craig with my knife. <laughs> That'll do you find you can break the ribs back even on a cow? Like on cows, them. it's a bit harder because everything gets car gets turns to bone, yeah. as well as breaking down the individual ribs. So on a, on a feedlot steer, you come down the ribs to the bottom, turn your knife sideways, and that's still cartilage where the, where the yeah. sternum and the ribs yeah. come together. And you cut down each rib individually and you just break them back one at a time. So yeah, you don't okay. have to use snippers or anything. Okay. And then also in cattle beasts as well, if you're having trouble breaking them back, you can score along the back of the ribs like I just did there. Mm -hmm. and that makes it break a lot easier. Yeah. So it lays, lays out nice and neat. All right. So he's laid back. We've already check, checked the esophagus and the uh, and the trachea. We're going to come back in here and look at his little brain in a minute. Now, we, the first thing you want to do before you go diving in is you want to have a look at stuff. And so mm -hmm. get in there with your hands and see these lungs feel pretty normal. Just a little bit of something there, just probably the way he was laying. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but there's no pneumonia there. <coughs> We're seeing the same thing we saw on the other one, a little bit of serious atrophy of the fat around the heart. Mm -hmm. So I think he's in a negative plane of energy, whether he's got worms chewing up his stuff or whether mom's not feeding him enough, we'll find out. Um, that liver looks, oh, it's a little bit mottled. Um, when they do get really hungry, they start mobilizing fat and then they take it to the liver. And if they don't have enough energy coming in at the front end, they'll start repackaging the liver and they'll get a hepatic lipidosis. Mm -hmm. and the edges will get nice and big and fat and rounded. That liver feels pretty normal, looks pretty normal. There's a kidney line right there. The fat around that kidney looks pretty normal. The kidney itself feels a little bit squishy, but we'll see. Here's all the gut. Here's the, uh, the stop gap of the cow. So when they get a puncture, this is what stops it. What's this stuff called? Men. Yeah, yeah. What's this yellow stuff? Yellow stuff. Is it a bit of a hint? Uh, is it like bile? Yeah, it's bile. So yeah. when they stop eating, they get um, the, the gallbladder fills up with um, bile. And then it just kind of seeps out through the, especially when, they, when they're deceased, it'll leak out of that and it'll stain the, stain the fluids or stain the, the, the post-mortem, but nothing to worry about. Let's get that out of the way so we can see it going. So here's the other mason. That's got a lot of material in there. We're going to look in there in a second. We don't want to make a mess. Underneath here is the, uh, is the, uh, uh, the rumen. That feels like the rumen of the last one, which was full of sand. I think he's gonna be full of sand as well, brother. Mm. And if they get full of sand, they end up with a mechanical obstruction, so they can't digest. Even though they drink milk, they feel full all the time. And because they can't, because um, they can't get the milk into them, they end up. Even though they're on mom and they and mom's looking after them, they um, they uh, they end up going backwards, which explains this serious atrophy on the heart. Also, if you look at these guts. There's not a lot of material in there. Like looking how empty this is. So you gotta say like, maybe he's got a good mum, but maybe also a bunch of them got in this habit of eating sand out of some of the soaks, like you were saying, Craig. Like maybe they, who knows why, but they think it's tasty. Yes, yeah, I don't know why they would do that. Um, here's his gut. Now, ooh, there's some good poo in there. So we wanna do a poo sample. So let's, we'll come back there in a minute. We're gonna do other samples, but we're gonna get that poo later. So let's take our samples. All right, so um, I always start up here at the front end, because when you get back here, things get pretty shitty in a hurry. So um, we got formalin, so meaning fixed samples, which is our big container. We got some formalin here, and then we're gonna do fresh samples. So we want a big sample for 
for one of them and we want a small sample nice and thin for one what's the story how do we do it small for fixed and yeah large for Wh why smalls for fixed you need the form one to be able to penetrate through all the tissue to fix it properly so that you can Beautiful. process it. Beautiful. Yeah, and what's the what's the rough ratio of formalin to tissue they want us to have at least? Uh, one to ten. Yeah, jeez, you're a genius. Do you need a, do you want a job when you graduate? <laughs> Beautiful. So that's fresh. All right, now we'll come into the lung or the, the, um, the heart. But have a look at that, Craig. See that? That's oh. serious atrophy. So as the fat that's around the heart is getting digested, it's it's turning to liquid. And it's filled that pericardium up with lots of fluid as well. So that's a lot of pericardial fluid. That's a lot of pericardial fluid. Um, can you hold that up just for a second? I'm gonna go get a syringe and suck up some of that pericardial fluid. They might be able to do something for us with it, so who knows? It's the guys at the egg department say, if in doubt, take it. Interesting. Cool, cool. So we're going to put this into a tube. What color tube should we put it into, Gorgeous? Uh, red. Yes, why red? Because it's um, got nothing in it. Hey, man, you are a genius. <laughs> <laughs> you want to grab one of those and label it for me? Interesting, eh? Mm. Yeah, sorry, bro. It's that interesting. You've lost some land. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we'll try to get the oh, water. That's interesting for it's you guys. Yeah. Hot water in What's South that? Africa. So hot water in South Africa, which was quite interesting. In a oh, sable yep. antelope. Yep. Yeah, it was very, very interesting. Are you interested in wildlife? You've made a couple of wildlife references. Well, um, we consider alpacas wild. <laughs> <laughs> um, wildlife, well, yeah, but more production. Ah, cool, cool. Brilliant. All right, let's get this heart out. So. Um, well, first thing, we'll check the opposite side. So they've got a mediastinum there, which is just a separation between the the, uh, the two lobes of the lung. Just make sure the other side doesn't have any pathology that we would have missed. Good. Now we're gonna take this heart out. So we're gonna go up to the base of the heart and try to try to get as much as we can without interfering with the, yeah, the valves and that. So hold the heart and look at you. The ears are up at you. So you got your your left and your right side. Your left and your right side. And then a cutting board will be good, but just I just cut through carefully. Lay it open. Yeah, so the which side is thicker? The left. Yeah, why is it thick? It pumps the blood to the rest of the body, whereas the right's only to the heart, uh, yeah. to the lungs. Yeah, totally. So it's working a heck of a lot harder. Uh, in cattle, their com heart failure is common in. Uh, right-sided heart. Beautiful, yeah, 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 and it's it's genetic. So they they they've started in Angus bulls. They do pulmonary arterial pressure testing, where you send a catheter in through the jugular and feed oh, it right. into the yeah, you feed it into the uh, the right atria, and they measure the pressure in there, yeah, and the right. pressure change is pretty rad, and it's genetically selected. So for animals, because what happens is they go into feedlots, and if they're at any sort of elevation, they end up with heart failure. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So wow. everything looks pretty clear there. Chordae tenae look clean. Um, when you've got an animal that's had like this is like in a feedlot and it's eating a lot of grain, it's got a bit of acidosis. It'll be absorbed through the rumen, it'll go through the bloodstream to the liver and they'll get liver abscessation. And then from there, it'll go through the, through the, the cable, sin, uh, port of cable, blah, 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 and end yep. up coming through the heart and they get, um, they get abscesses in the, uh, yeah. in the, in the right um, uh, AV valve on these chordae tendinae. The same stuff that we're talking about up here, the fusobacterium necrophorum mm. will be on the chordae tendinae, which will be yeah. So we'll take it. Take a little sample, a little bit of fresh there for us, and a nice thin sample for fix. Beauty, beauty, cool, cool. Beyonce. All right, I'll go back to the backhand. So a nice fresh, nice piece of, nice big chunk of fresh liver. I'll steer clear of that. Okay. Oh, I'll steer clear of that gallbladder. Keep getting it. I don't know if it might matter if it was in there anyway. Anyway. I don't know if it matter if the gallbladder was in the sample or not for a liver mm, sample, but I'm not sure. we might as well keep it just straight liver. And then just take a little thin slice for... Don't want it in there when you've got to eat it. Aye, <laughs> aye. Copy. 
Man, I can eat about anything, brother, but liver just kind of gives me like willies. Yeah, we know the stories. Yeah. <laughs> you can do kidneys too, but you got to boil the fish out of them. Yeah. All right, so we go for the kidneys. Kidneys, I just tend to get behind them and pull them up and out rather than trying to get in there and cut them out. Mm -hmm. And then, then cut it loose. And cut through. Again, the cutting board would be good. Sometimes the, the animal will provide you one. Slide that open, you can see that. All the good, good bits, the medulla and the cortex and all that, the renal pelvis. Cut a little slice trying to capture all those little bits, things with veins. <laughs> Stone, give that a bit of a sharpen. There you go. Give that a bit of fresh. Oops, shit. There we go. There we go. Hump on here before I make a mess. Got a bit of. A little bit of scalded muscle. Got a big chunk. There we go. Just thank you. All right, let's get into the interesting stuff. Can we get a container for abomasal contents? Uh, yeah. I can see some sand in there, man. I don't know why these guys are eating sand. I think that's our issue. All right, look at that. Oh, poor little farts. Yeah, there's not much point of just sending that in. I guess it's just gonna be sand. So they're they're obstructed with sand. Yeah. Golly. Yeah, that's what that's what's getting them. Same as the last guy. Funny, I mean, we'll do where some, they are, we'll, they, we'll do there's things. grass wherever they are. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why yeah, they've no decided idea. to sand them. Let's throw a little bit of this into the room. Pica, they call it when they eat dirt. Right. It's looking the same as the other one. It is, yeah. This. Son of a biscuit eater. I've gone into this room and have a look at this, gorgeous. Same, I mean, they're, they're pretty ruminant, so it really shouldn't be doing much. Mm. Yeah, it's just all sand. Yeah, and are gonna, you know, they were, they were blocked up, so they are getting low in energy. They are digesting their own fat. That's why that serous atrophy of the fat around the heart. And, uh, and then when we yarded them to mark them, and so they've just started eating it recently, like, because they're beautiful plum lambs, so they're doing fantastic on their mums. And then, because they started transitioning from a from an animal that drinks milk to an animal that eats grass for some reason, they um, they must. Have, I wonder if they're finding something tasty that they're pulling up, and it's got a lot of sand stuck to the roots or something. Some sort of really tasty plant that we don't normally get, but this year is worse. Mmm, good bee. Yeah. So oh, biscuit here. He's like, what's what's the solution? Well, I guess um. Move them off the paddock. Yeah, and, and maybe even maybe some um, some supplemental like the hay or something that the mothers will come and teach them to eat. But let's keep throwing some stuff in. Son of a duck. There, drop that in there. Little bits of little bits of gut. Oh, I'll, I'll grab a fecal sample too. Good, gorgeous. Yeah. So Amy's dad's uh, West Australian. Where at? What no, Australia? he just he just lived over here um, oh, okay. when he was younger. Did some work. I was like me, I lived here when I was younger too. Not in America? <laughs> no, it's not in America. Yeah, I've been here since I was 29. Yeah, Look, okay, check out her tiny little uterus. Isn't that cool? Her um, ovaries? Yeah. Pretty rad. All the oocytes she's ever going to have in her entire life are there already. Okay. Every every female is born with all of her baby, all of her haploid um, little um, oocytes are already there from the get go. Um, don't know it. Well, I'll, um, I'll remove her little brain real quick. I'll just go wash my hands and we'll remove that brain real fast. Keep going. Yeah, keep going, man. Yeah. How's the season treating you otherwise, Craig? Yeah, it's been good. Yeah, Tell the cows. plenty of rain. Cows are, yeah, real good. Get this back a bit so we can get in there with the saw. There you go, buddy. You're okay. So 
I just skin over the top of the head, Amy, so that yep. the saw has some bite into it. Put it over, over the hide, it doesn't. Um... <coughs> <coughs> kind of jiggles around it doesn't really work very well um, for we use reciprocating saws for the cattle beasts works really really well but these dudes are pretty small so. It's pretty common to go too low. Same as when you're euthanizing an animal. You, know, mm -hmm. you go from the pole to the pole to the pole to the pole. Most people shoot too low. Mm -hmm. But if you shoot there, what are you shooting into? Just the frontal. Frontal sinus, yeah. And so it often ricochets around in there and doesn't get them. So we'll cut through right here. There's the fontanelle there. A little, oh, right. a little soft spot. Like. Fontanelle will be there. Imagine the fontanelle. I'm making shit up, buddy. <laughs> of the zombies brains <laughs> all right so we'll take that little section out Boop. come here little buddy that can go in into the formula come on sorry can we just give a little shot to the department then um, <clears throat> so for this last bit we just carefully reflect back that cerebrum behind that's the cerebellum the, you know, chewing gum and walking at the same time organ. Mm -hmm. and see that there, that little strip? That's called the tentorium. You just gotta cut him. That's what uh, sometimes gets people that stop, you know, have a seatbelt on and they stop in a hurry. Sometimes they end up with a, a contra coup injury where the brain herniates through the, uh, through the, um, through that tentorium. Then swells up and, and that's good night, Gracie. Let's go to bilateral. Uh, it's, it's all the way around and it okay. separates between the you know you got your cerebellum you got you got cerebellum oh, and the so cerebrum so cool. and it's, it's like a it's a it sits around it and keeps the two separate yeah and so what happens when someone stops in a hurry is the brain herniates back through it yeah okay or, or it goes through and smashes forward and then comes back or yeah what have you and then i just take and push that push the spinal cord from that side should pop the pop that cerebellum through with that damaging now that we've opened up that tentorium Oops, there's a bit of fixed for us. Oh, fixed? Oh, sorry, fit, fresh, sorry. Thank you. You're, you, you're, you know what I was going to say. You're on to it. Hello, buddy. I'm just try to pull this cerebellum out without traumatizing it too much. There's the cerebellum with the brain stem. And I cut that a little too far back, so the back end of the cerebrum is just falling off. But they'll be okay. Damn my. All right. That's him. Well. So you'll do the postmortem on the next one. Sure. And um, yeah, we'll see if we see the same things. And, and I'll be your huckleberry and take all your samples. I think we're on to it, brother. We'll do a fecal egg count, see if, if, there, if there's a worm burden that might be causing a bit of. You know, they, they do weird things when they've got a worm burden because they've got kind of a feeling of digestive malaise, you know, like, uh. <coughs> Interesting stuff in feedlots, they find um, even when they have low worm counts, if you drench going into the feedlot, their average daily intake is increased significantly. And even cows on pasture with, um, with low egg worm counts with cuperia, which is considered pretty innocuous, they graze for an additional hour a day if they don't have any worms if you drench them. And so while we think of worms as being a parasitic organism that either takes digestive goodies or takes blood, like homongous. It also um, causes like uh, inhabitants. In and so maybe it's making these guys do some weird stuff. Like piking in the US, um, there's, some oil, there's some parasites in the, in the soil that it's funny if you eat it, it gives you this urge to eat dirt. And so it's like this cycle. Oh. It's pretty rad, isn't it? Yeah, that, that a digestive organism could affect you yeah. the way you think. Yeah, it's a crazy world. So all my weirdness I blame on eating dirt. Yeah, too many parasites. That's it, that's it, yeah. <laughs>
That's on the key. Right, yeah, well, you'll do the next one. It'll be awesome. Cool, Craig. We'll see what we find. All right.